That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Blue Jean, the directorial debut of Georgia Oakley, which premiered in the Venice Days sidebar at the 2022 Venice Film Festival. It is being released courtesy of Magnolia Pictures on June 9th, 2023. So you saw this film last year? Yeah, I reviewed it out of Venice and I, I quite enjoyed it. I think it's a very strong debut with a, a great uh, lead performance and some supporting characters that are fantastic. And then you rewatched it yesterday. With you. I thought this movie was very good. Yes. The story. In 1988, a closeted teacher is pushed to the brink when a new student threatens to expose her sexuality. So the teacher, her name is Jean. Mm -hmm. She's That's played by... Rosie McEwen, who was uh, in a film we reviewed last year called Vesper. Okay. Uh, that was co-directed by the Lithuanian director, Christina uh, Bu 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 Buojite, uh, which we both quite liked, I think, if you remember. No. About that 13-year-old that has the seeds that has to repopulate the earth. It's kind of a... Oh, Vesper, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Jean teaches physical education... She is a lesbian, but she's closeted because it's 1980s in the UK. And so the climate for homosexuals is not favorable. Margaret Thatcher. But there's this new student, Lois, played by... Uh, Lois is played by Lucy Halliday. She's different. The other girls are bullying her and, and the boys are bullying her. And it's clear Jean sees something in her, but is sort of keeping a distance because she doesn't want any attention brought to her own sexuality because students are kind of make like kind of insinuating that Jean, the teacher is a lesbian, but anything, anyway, everything Jean frequents a gay bar. And one day she sees Lois there, her 15 year old student. So she kind of freaks out and tells her she needs to like not go there and to not out her basically. But everything culminates with, one of the main bullies at the school, this little redhead girl, one, Sh Siobhan. One day Lois is in the shower, and we can talk about Siobhan, but one day Lois is in the shower and Siobhan approaches her and makes a move on her, like to kiss her. And then all of a sudden she freaks out. There's an incident. Jean gets pulled in with the principal, another teacher, and they're questioning how could this happen. There was a previous incident, Jean didn't report, and Jean is afraid. Like, well, you know, I don't want any heat on me. And I already told this girl to stop doing this shit. So Jean kind of throws Lois under the bus and Lois gets expelled. But then Jean feels guilty. She actually comes out to her brother-in-law and then she takes Lois to like a party where, cause it seems like they live in a smaller town. Uh, they're in Newcastle. So she takes Lois to this party where there are a bunch of lesbians and basically tells her, like, I'm messed up because no one really showed me the way and supported me. I don't want that to happen to you. So I'm letting you know that there is support for you. She goes to this party and they have something called the Bog Fund, mm -hmm. which is basically like this community money that the more professional lesbians, like the teachers, doctors, lawyers, contribute to so that the, the, the ones who don't have, have some support. The end. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I thought this movie was very good. Yeah, I agree. It has, uh, I think if it has kind of that Ken Loach sense of fatalism. He's made films, you know, for years now, but of course, during set during the, the terror of Thatcher, like a, a film called Looks and Smiles, which is very much like the heterosexual version of this. Uh, and also, of course, Terrence Davies, who documented queer experiences through period pieces, many of which were autobiographical. Uh, but this feels very familiar. And also, uh, Jean, uh, I think we both thought that is feels like somebody we know and can, re can relate to. Yeah, the character work for Jean is very good. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just gonna go through my notes. So we see Jean coloring her hair like twice. Mm -hmm. And I was very At confused. Least. I like Jean. Mm -hmm. I like the the I like the look of the film. It it feels late eighties without trying too hard. So in a way it almost feels timeless. Because of how it relates to today as which well. Which is kind of a, which is unfortunate because yeah, we you know, this is thirty five years ago and yet this story feels like it could be set in twenty twenty three and still makes sense, which is heartbreaking. But getting back to her hair, Jean has a short haircut and she's blonde and we see her color her hair twice and it looks like she's like bleaching her entire head or coloring her entire head i'm confused the first thing the first time it looks like bleach and the second time it looks like color 
but the result doesn't match either application. That really threw me off. I know that's nitpicky, but... I know. I took that as to be upkeep because the, the film opens with her doing that and nobody has any reaction. So th that's just her look. Right, but, but the application doesn't make sense. I agree. Unless I agree. it were toner, but then it's like her hair doesn't look like it's been toned anyway. But I, I did like her hair. Mm -hmm. um, so Jean has a girlfriend named... Mm -hmm. Viv, played Viv. by Carrie Haynes, who looks much different than she usually does I liked from her. where I've seen her but yeah I liked her she's much more openly queer she's not passing no no she's not mm -hmm. uh, and we first see sort of the tension in their relationship because Viv is over at Jean's place and they're like making out on the couch when all of a sudden someone knocks on the door and it's Jean's sister talking about somebody's in the hospital I need to drop off my son your nephew and she's like, oh, okay. But before she opens the door, she tells her girlfriend, like, could you, you know, duck out? But the boy still sees the girlfriend, which comes back later. Mm -hmm. But clearly her girlfriend, Viv, is not happy. Yeah, she, she's like, why am I the friend? And she's like, I don't want to... I think it is a very sly, subtle way of all of this... this uh, how, how careful we are about how we can confuse the children and frighten the horses. And Well, that connects to the... Like, then we see Jean with Viv at the gay bar with all of Viv's friends. Which is like how killing of Sister George, the gay bar scene, probably should have felt. Yes, and they're reading like personal ads and they are talking about sex the way queer people tend to talk about sex when they're together, which mm -hmm. is pretty openly and kind of vulgar. And kind of incestuous yes. in friend groups. Yeah. Yes, so Jean's not accustomed to that, so she gets upset like because she's upset to hear that one of the other ladies has clearly had sex with Viv. Mm -hmm. I thought that was very well done because it felt very authentic. Yes. And then that's when Jean sees her student. And the look on her face, it all felt very familiar. Like seeing someone somewhere that you don't want to see someone. And it's like, damn, this is my only place I can be me. And now I got to... Ah. Yeah. yeah. I thought that was handled I well. That. And I, there's there are a couple really good passages between Viv and um, Jean. Where uh, Viv tells Jean that she's like the student Lois, this deer in the headlights. And is described as skittish. And it's like, yeah, when you're not being your authentic self and you're kind of but, yeah. having to recalibrate everywhere you go, it felt very familiar. But Jean has every right to be afraid. The political climate, the social climate, we keep getting shots of uh, Jean has a neighbor across the way, this older woman who's always glaring at her through the window. Like, I know that there's something wrong with you. And all of the billboards with Margaret Thatcher's bullshit on it. Um, after an incident that we'll probably talk a little bit more of at school is finally when Jean goes with her straight co-workers and she's right under a glaring neon, like literal arrow that pointed right. <laughs> yeah, there are a lot of little details. I like the score and the soundtrack selections. Mm -hmm. Again, it, it felt like, it felt 80s, but again, it could have also been 2023. You can paste Blue Monday into anything, and I'm going to fall in love with that scene. Um, yeah, I thought it was well done. And with her, I kept wanting to call it, like, Jean is the warmest color. Yeah. And, I, and also Lana Del Rey's blue jeans. High school is so awful. Yeah. Here, like, watching these girls be mean, it's just like, ugh. And then, they're so mean to Lois, because, of course, Jean's a PE teacher, so they're playing some game. Is it basketball? And Some of the balls. They're being mean to Lois, and then Lois actually makes a shot, and then they all like her. Like, so it only took her making, and, and then they immediately go back to teasing her. Right, and then I think there's a lot of again the subtlety. I think is pretty good, great because Siobhan probably doesn't even know how she feels anyway. But I know I get the sense that she is the star pupil for Jean, and she likes that attention. Whether or not she's also a, a having a sexual attraction to Jean is. Maybe she doesn't know that yet. And the scene, I, and I don't think it's very ambiguous. I think that she sets up um, Lois to get in trouble by seducing her in the shower. I don't think it's ambiguous. I don't think she's having gay panic. I think she did that on purpose. But um, Lois reminds me, though, of <clears throat> the, the actress that played the Chris Klein sister in the film Election with Reese Witherspoon. Well, speaking of sisters, there's a really good scene where Jean goes to have a lunch at her sister's house. And it's the sister, her husband, and the son, who we previously met being babysat by Jean. And it's clear the sister knows 
Mm-hmm. Jean's a lesbian because the sister still has... Jean used to be married to a man mm-hmm. and got a divorce. But the sister still has the wedding portrait up. And Jean's like, can you please take this down? Like, this is a part of my life I don't want to remember. And her sister's like, I don't know why you want to erase your previous life just because you have a new life. And Jean's trying to play dumb, like, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. And her sister's like, bitch, I know you're a lesbian. And it's fine with me. But then she says, but you know, my son's only five and it's confusing to him. Like, could you not? Your reaction to it was more negative than mine. I felt like for the time and the place, her sister felt like, because I think this relates a lot to even current time. It's like people, you know, everyone has their own priorities. And this sister who's married to this obviously conservative man living in this environment where she probably has to engage in shit that she doesn't believe in. It's like, you know, me being an ally is probably not top of my list. So all I can do is relate to you individually. And she is telling her sister one-on-one, like, I see you, you're okay with me, but like, I have my own life to live and I'm not going to go on these damn marches at the Pride Festival with you. Sure, but at the same time, we have to get to a point culturally where... uh, we don't realize that we are still stigmatizing gay queer people, the LGBTQIA plus community, by uh, making them feel abnormal when we have conversations about don't say gay or we don't want to talk about pride when everything else we're uh, culturally saturated with is purely heterosexual. Uh, and sure, th- but it's baby steps. Like if someone's trying to show, like, I mean, I think we need to meet people where they are. And, and work with that first instead of being like, I don't like the way you refer to my girlfriend, so I'm going to write you off completely. And it's like, well... Well, those are kind of semantics. At least she's, not, like, acknowledging you. Like, sure. <laughs> and this is new to her. Like, my sister was married to a man, and then she just got divorced, and now clearly she's a lesbian and doesn't want to talk about it. I don't know anything about this. How am I... And the sister even asked Jean, like, well, what's she like? She does extend interest, like, I want to know more about your life. But the irony is this fear of confusing the children ends up uh, causing confused adults because we're all trying to uh, toe the line to be part of some program that we... I agree with you, but in this this story, I don't think that the sister was out of pocket because that little boy only knows his Auntie Jean used to be married to Uncle Chris or whatever, and then all of a sudden, now you have this butch-ass lesbian in the house who's your friend. I mean, even the way Viv... I think it's all very well done, because even the way Viv looks supports this, because Viv, to a kid, would be confusing, I think. Like, well, she kind of looks like a man, and she has tattoos, and she dresses kind of, like, different from what I'm used to. So to me, it all makes sense, because we also... All we know is that the little boy told his mom. We don't know what he told her. So maybe he did exemplify confusion, in which case the mom is not pulling shit out of her ass. Like, he really was confused at what he saw and who that person was. But it's not about us debating that. I think it's very well handled in the film. Like, it was a good casting choice. I I think the sister, that characterization, I liked. Because it's hard. It's hard when you receive some kind of acknowledgement and love from a family member, yet they're also negating who you really are and trying to mm, navigate that, I think, is confusing and difficult for people. It's also in that dinner scene where the little nephew, he doesn't want his food and he throws that plate on the floor. And I was like... Do you know what happened to me as a child if I... My mom would have threw the plate at me. Like, at my head. I definitely wouldn't have been eating anytime soon. No. Um... The uh, but he gets a bedtime story. <laughs> there's a scene where Jean is running, like she's going for her daily jog, and she's wearing a beanie. And then over the beanie, she has her little Walkman headphones. And I just thought, I'm so radio uh, grateful for my Beat Studio Three headphones. <laughs> God, can you do you remember having to listen to Walkman? Like uh, yes, you couldn't yeah. run. You yeah. definitely couldn't run. <laughs> no, and then yeah, and then when they came out the disc man that had the better headphones, like like are behind your ear Mm -hmm. I thought oh this is luxury luxury but now I bet if I listen to them I'd be like this is I also like the shout outs in uh, there's a somebody has a uh, Well of Loneliness by Radcliffe Hall that she's paging through which of course is an important uh, lesbian text a classic that many people we see read secretly. We see Jean fiddling with a cassette tape on her nightstand. It's like to help uh, sleep, mm-hmm. like it's like a like talking through sleep pattern, or I don't know. It's something to help her sleep. What did you think that was? Why was that important? That we get that like three times. I think that her ritual, like her, that 
her ritual to be herself and kind of having to unwind from the day. Like, I, I don't know. I, I assumed that that had to do something with how when you have to kind of live set two lives and compartmentalize everything and kind of having to come down from that, that that's her rhythm. A, a, a scene that really, I really, it connected with me is when Jean almost gets busted because after the whole situation with Lois and the showers, you know, and having to kind of throw Lois under the bus, Jean is scared. So throughout the film, like two times prior, one of Jean's co-workers asks her to go out for like happy hour. Mm -hmm. And Jean's like, nah, I have shit to do. But after she almost gets in trouble, then we see her with her straight co-workers looking miserable. And I thought that was a really good example of how sometimes when we know that we maybe did too much or like we like we, it was a close call, like I need to calm down. And well, that's, isn't that how people like, I gotta get prayed up? But then that's, <laughs> but, but then it's also like, you know that this is not, like this is also not in line with what you want to do. So then there's that conundrum of mm -hmm. like, the life I want to live is causing me grief. Well, just like her confrontation with Lois in the bathroom at the gay bar, which causes has the ripple effect of thinking to Viv, she Viv thinks she's trying to hit on that girl. It's like this is what happens when we're keeping these secrets about ourselves. We, it, it everything spins out of control. Viv has already told Jean like, I, you know, like I don't really want to mess with you, and then they meet for like a dinner at a diner, and Viv basically rejects Jean like. Listen, good for you that you feel like you want to evolve, but I'm not here for that. Like, I, I like I can't live like this with you. And because Jean is proposing that they move out of the town they're in. Yeah, to some let's go be lesbians out on the, in the big city. on the wharf and, or somewhere where no one knows. Oh yeah, but then Viv is like, no, I like it here. Like I like my life here. I've made a life for myself. But then I thought it was funny that clearly Jean's upset and she lights a cigarette. And the restaurant owner. Who is nearby the whole time based on the proximity of his voice. He's like, you can't smoke it here, but there's an ashtray at the table and she gets mad like, well, then why is this here? <laughs> um, my, my last note is, I think the scene where Jean comes out, because she's at a birthday party for her nephew at this house with all these stuffy ass people and they're all talking about politics. So of course it's annoying. And then this one guy is being super obnoxious, just talking out of turn. And he asked Jean about like, oh, you're divorced, sorry, blah, blah. Oh, well, I'm sure you find a lot of good candidates when you go out with your coworkers. And she just blurts it out, I'm a lesbian. Mm -hmm. And the way her brother-in-law looks at her is like, and then she just laughs and goes, well, I have to go, here's this gift, bye. And then she goes outside and starts crying and laughing and then crying, but she looks relieved. Mm -hmm. The car, I mean, it, it's a really, it's well done. Catharsis. It's very well done. Yeah. yeah. But I don't have anything else to say. It's just a very well done, you know, I think char character study. Yeah. And I think it's important. Again, you know, we've seen films like this before, of course, but I think uh, now more than ever, I think we still need to be reminded of the kind of grueling shit that we've all come out of and still have to contend with. So I appreciate any film where someone is actively resisting conformity. What would you give Blue Jean? Three and a half. I would give it three and a half out of five as well. Hit the thanks button. Listen to our podcast. Bye. <laughs>